So once again, welcome to Medline, CINAHL, and Mesh. In today's workshop, I'm going to introduce you to two of our library's databases, Medline and CINAHL. And I'm going to give you techniques to become more effective at locating medical, nursing, and allied health information within those specific databases. We have several learning objectives that we're going to accomplish by the end of the hour. First off, you're going to know how to access the Medline and CINAHL databases from the library. You're going to understand what types of information are available within Medline and CINAHL. You'll understand how to use MeSH headings in order to construct and run a search in both CINAHL and Medline. We'll talk about identifying and effectively using database search limits. And I'll also show you where you can access the evidence-based treatment guide on the library's website. We're going to start with Medline. And to get to any of our library's databases, you simply need to click on the hyperlink within the main menu bar, A to Z databases. That's going to take you to an alphabetical listing of all of the library's research databases. And you can use the alphabetical navigation across the top of the page here to go to the specific database you're looking for. So we're starting with Medline. And here we have Medline complete. So what is Medline? Medline provides full text access to more than 1,470 academic journals and reports in the areas of medicine, nursing, dentistry, veterinary medicine, behavioral science, healthcare systems, and preclinical sciences. There are some specific database features and limiters that are available only when you're accessing Medline directly because it is possible to retrieve Medline results uh, using our Roadrunner search. That's the central search box that you see in our library's homepage. It's a search engine that's aggregately displaying results from almost all of our library's databases. But in today's workshop, you're going to see there are some unique features of Medline that you can only access by going to the native database. We are going to start by talking about MeSH, and MeSH stands for Medical Subject Headings. We're going to proceed to MeSH 2017, which you can see in the top navigation bar here uh, on the library's, or rather on the database's landing page. MeSH Medical subject headings are a controlled vocabulary thesaurus. This provides uniformity and consistency to the organization of biomedical literature, and it helps you to locate information more easily. There are 27,455 descriptor, descriptors within MeSH, and there are also over 220,000 entry terms that assist in finding the most appropriate MeSH heading. Uh, just as an example, within the outline, let's say that you're looking for information on vitamin C. So this is the example that we provide in the outline. You're going to type out vitamin C, you're using natural language, you're using the terminology that you think best expresses your search. However, you can see MeSH is telling you to use essentially the medical nomenclature. So instead of vitamin C, you would want to use ascorbic acid. All right, so it is a good rule of thumb that when you're searching within Medline as well as CINAHL, you want to try searching for your term uh, within MeSH, within the controlled vocabulary thesaurus so that you're using the proper terminology. Okay, let's go back to MeSH, and we're going to do an example here. We'll say that I'm looking for information on panic disorder. So I'll type my term into the search box, go ahead and click Browse. The term is going to appear, and it should be hyperlinked. So there's a number of different things that we could look at here. I'm going to click on the term itself first because it's going to reveal something referred to as a tree structure. 
Mesh descriptors are organized into 16 broad categories, which are further divided into subcategories. Within each subcategory, descriptors are arrayed hierarchically from the most general term to the most specific in up to 12 hierarchical levels. Because of the branching structure of the hierarchies, these lists are referred to as trees. So you can see in our particular tree, and remember, the most broad or the most general term is going to appear at the top of your tree. So in our example, anxiety disorders is the broad overarching term. And as we move further down our tree, that's when you're getting more granular. So you're hitting these more specific subheadings and panic disorder happens to fall under that tree of anxiety disorders. This can be helpful because let's say that your search term is too narrow. You can use the tree structure to instead use a broader term or vice versa. If your term happens to be too broad, the tree may reveal some more specific terminology that you can use. So we'll go ahead and check mark the term that we want to utilize. And in this case, again, I'm looking for information related to panic disorder. Now, when you do that, it's going to reveal an even more detailed menu here on the right-hand side of subheadings, okay? So these subheadings can be added to your search to get even more specific. And you can see the terminology here. Perhaps I'm looking for information on diagnoses or economics or history related to panic disorder. So these subheadings can be extremely useful. And we'll say in my example search that I am curious to know how does one go about diagnosing panic disorder. So I have selected diagnosis from my list of subheadings. Now, once I've done that, over on the far right hand side, it's displaying my search as I've set it up thus far. So my search terms are panic disorder, and you can see there is a forward slash and then the initials or the acronym DI because I'm searching for diagnosis. Now, there are two other concepts listed here. The first is explode, and the other is major concept. Okay, so explode. Uh, it sounds kind of scary, but it's not. Explode is going to be in the instance where you are looking to essentially expand your search. When you click Explode, it's going to search and retrieve all documents that contain the subject term that you did select, as well as any associated terms that appear below that specific subject in the tree. So you can think of Explode, again, as broadening or expanding your search. Uh, in this example, I'm just going to stick to panic disorder, but keep that in mind. If you do want to broaden your search out a bit, then you may want to se select the Explode option. The second item that we have listed there is something referred to as major concept. When you select major concept, you create a search that finds only records for which the subject heading is a major point of the article. This will greatly narrow your results. Again, you are only going to get results in which that particular subject is a major point of the article. So in our example search, I do want to select major concept. Okay, something else that I want to note here you may see an icon of what appears to be a text bubble, and we can see it listed here to the right of the subject terms in our tree. And we also see them listed here next to subheadings. These are referred to as scope notes. And scope notes can be extremely helpful. They're going to define that term 
and they're going to provide information about using it with the subject headings. So if you are searching for medical terminology within here and perhaps your understanding of that term is still a bit shaky, the scope note will clearly define that. So you can hover over that icon itself and so I just clicked on the scope note for panic disorder and it's telling me precisely what panic disorder is by definition. You can do the same for any of the subheadings listed here. So again, I had selected diagnosis, but maybe I want a clear cut definition as to precisely what type of results am I going to get? Okay, so what exactly will diagnosis entail? So we have panic disorder selected here. Again, I'm looking for information on diagnosing panic disorder. But I want to note that you can continue to combine selections within your search using Boolean operators. And if that terminology is foreign to you, I highly recommend that you either view or attend our Searching 101 workshop. We go over Boolean operators in detail. They're ways of expanding or refining your search. So with Mesh, you're actually able to combine additional Mesh selections using Boolean operators to narrow your results. What you would do is go back to your term list and it's not going to eliminate your selection. So you can see on the right hand side, I still have panic disorder selected, but I'll scroll down to the bottom and there's going to be an option here to browse additional terms. So let's say that I want to make this search a bit more precise. I do have that option. I would simply click on browse additional terms. And again, don't panic, it's not eliminating whatever terms you've selected thus far. And you'll even see this note here, your previously selected search terms are being retained. Okay, so we're still searching for diagnoses of panic disorder. But we'll say that in terms of my research, I'm interested in seeing the diagnosis of panic, panic disorder within male adolescents. I'll go ahead and click browse. And this is another example where Mesh is telling me the correct terminology to use. So instead of male adolescent, I should simply select the term adolescent. I will check mark the box next to adolescent. We'll come over to our search box on the right. Again, I'm searching for panic disorder as a major concept, and I'm looking for information around diagnosing panic disorder within adolescents. I'm going to use Boolean logic to combine this search. So you can see at the bottom here, I can combine my selections with and or or. I have selected and in this instance. I'll go ahead and now search our database, and hopefully the search isn't too refined. I don't think it will be and it wasn't, so I got over 100 results. I can again see all of the particular limitations I put on my search over here, searching for panic disorder as a major concept, so each of these articles has to be centrally focused on the concept of panic disorder. It has to discuss diagnosing panic disorder and specifically within adolescence. Now, I know that was exceptionally detailed and rather quick, but I just wanted to orient you to using Mesh. Are there any questions? Let me know in chat. Any questions related to Mesh, uh, related to using the Explode feature, major concept, uh, scope note, any questions on the tree structure or on subheadings within Mesh? Go ahead and type that question into chat. Not seeing any questions in chat, but if anything uh, pops into your mind, 
please let me know. We're just going to continue on so that we have enough time to hit everything in this hour. All right, so we just covered mesh in detail, but I mentioned towards the beginning of the workshop that Medline has some advanced search features that are unique to the database. So I just wanted to cover a couple of those, and we're going to be able to see all of those advanced search limits by going to the advanced search page within Medline. And the link to access that is directly below our basic search box here at the top. So let me click on advanced search. And you can see it's still retaining my search terms up here. Uh, I'm gonna actually clear that out. And below we have our search options. And you can see that we have quite a number of search options here. Uh, there's just a couple that I wanted to highlight. So uh, just in terms of search limits, what you're typically going to see in most databases are limits for, say, full text or limiting to a specific publication or a specific date range. But again, we have some limiters in Medline that you're never going to see in any other database. The first limiter that I want to uh, discuss is the EBM reviews limiter. And you're actually going to see that over here on the left-hand side. So EBM reviews, and there's an option to check mark it. Let me explain what this is. EBM stands for evidence-based medicine. EBM refers to the practice of incorporating study results and procedures into everyday practical application by practitioners. Limiting your search to high quality evidence-based content is going to expose you to some really high level research and it's also going to include quite a number of systematic reviews. The only thing that I do want to mention with the EBM reviews is the majority of results are going to come from the Cochrane database of systematic reviews. So there's a possibility that you may run into results that are not available within full text. Uh, they could potentially be candidates for interlibrary loan though, so keep that in mind. So if I'm looking for that evidence-based medicine, I'm going to check mark that box. And then I can go ahead and add my specific search terms in my search boxes at the top. So we'll say that I'm looking for anything related to obsessive compulsive disorder. Let's go ahead and click search. And you should get a fairly small set of results. Again, EBM, evidence-based medicine. This is high quality evidence-based content. So you're not going to see a ton of it, but you can rest assured that what you're looking at is extremely detailed. And again, we're talking about high level evidence-based research. Any questions on EBM reviews, please let me know. I'm going back to our advanced search screen and I'm going to tell you about one other search option here, again, unique to Medline. And that is the option for clinical queries. And clinical queries is actually a drop down field over here on the left hand side. With clinical queries, you're able to limit your search to scientifically sound and clinically relevant study reports in nine different clinical areas. So therapy, diagnosis, prognosis, reviews, clinical prediction guides, qualitative causation, costs, as well as economics. Now for every single one of those clinical areas, there's going to be typically three options, high sensitivity, high specificity, and then best balance. High sensitivity will be your broadest search. It's going to retrieve the most results and they may not all be exceptionally relevant. High specificity, on the other hand, is going to be your narrowest search. So you're going to retrieve the smallest set of results if you select that, but they are going to be extremely relevant. And then lastly, best balance, as the name would imply, it's going to be a combination of those two searches, okay? 
So for example here, uh, let's say that I'm interested in, I'll go back up to the top here, I'm gonna clear out our search from before. I am researching obesity, and I'm going to use the clinical queries option related to, let's say costs, and I am going to select high specificity. So recall that high specificity is going to be the narrowest search. We're going to get the smallest set of results, but they're all going to be highly relevant. So I am anticipating getting back a small set of results that are all going to be specifically related to cost and obesity. And you can see this is excellent. We actually got quite a lot of results. Uh, but every single one I can see, just even observing the title, is going to be related to um, cost, cost effectiveness, as it relates to obesity treatment or prevention. Any questions on EBM reviews or clinical queries? Again, if you have questions, just let me know in chat. We're moving on to just a couple other features that I want to highlight within Medline. Medline has an option for browsing and searching within publications. Again, we have a lot of high-level peer-reviewed publications within Medline that you may want to explore. You can use the publications option right there in the top navigation bar. And once you've selected publications, you're going to see a publication details page that allows you to, again, search within a specific publication or you could browse issues. Perhaps you're just interested in browsing the latest issue from that specific publication. You have three ways of searching here. You can use alphabetical, subject and description, or match any words. So alphabetical is just going to look for journals beginning with whatever letters you enter. Subject and description, it's actually going to search the, the subject, description, and title fields of the journal for whichever word you just typed in or words. And then lastly, match any words is going to find any publications that contain one or more of the terms that you typed in. And the results will be displayed uh, according to relevance. I'm going to try searching by subject and description. And we'll say that I'm looking for any publications related to autism. Go ahead and click browse. And it looks like I've come back here with 11 publications. So again, these are going to be uh, peer reviewed, high level research publications related to autism and I can click on any of those corresponding hyperlinks in order to browse or search within that particular publication. And the last feature within Medline that I just wanted to quickly highlight, again in our top navigation bar, is the option of browsing and searching for images. So there is an images search that you can conduct across the entire database. Images will include photographs, graphs, maps, charts, diagrams, or illustrations related to whatever key term you provide within the search box. So just as an example, We'll say that I'm looking for any images related to pet therapy. Go ahead and type that in my box and click search. And looks like I have some images, possibly some charts related to uh, pet therapy. Are there any questions at all on Medline? 
We are about to move into CINAHL for the second half of the workshop here, uh, but I'll pause for a minute. Any questions related to uh, anything we covered as a recap? We looked at the images search. We talked about how you can search for publications within Medline. We looked at some advanced search features in Medline, specifically uh, limiting your search to EBM reviews or clinical queries. Uh, we talked about mesh in detail. We utilized mesh to examine tree structures. We talked about the explode and major concept features. I explained how scope notes work. And we also discussed being able to combine your search using Boolean operators within mesh. Any questions? Okay, if you do think of anything, let me know in chat or stick around at the end and ask me whatever you'd like to ask. We are going to move on to CINAHL now. I'm heading back to our A to Z databases page. I'll navigate over to C and select CINAHL complete from here. So let's start with the basics. What is CINAHL? CINAHL stands for the Cumulative Index to Nursing and Allied Health Literature. It provides full text access to more than 610 journals covering a wide range of topics, including nursing, biomedicine, alternative and complementary medicine, consumer health, and allied health disciplines. So in addition to these journals, though, you also have access to healthcare books, nursing dissertations, selected conference proceedings, standards of practice, audio visuals, book chapters, and more. And I will specifically show you what more means. Once again, you get to CINAHL using our A to Z databases page. And CINAHL has a feature within it that is more or less identical to Mesh. So I'm not going to do any in-depth searching, but just want to point it out here. In our top navigation bar, you have something referred to as CINAHL headings. And these are subject headings, and they actually they um, follow the structure of MeSH. So it is the same exact thing here. If you were searching for some uh, detailed medical scientific terminology, and you want to make sure you're utilizing the correct terms, if you're within CINAHL, go ahead and proceed to CINAHL headings, just like we did in Medline. You would type in your particular term, and then it's going to appear within the results list. You can browse the tree structure, do all the same things that we did within Medline. Okay. All right, so I mentioned that CINAHL has much more beyond journals. So I wanted to quickly highlight those for you, and they're going to be accessed in that top navigation bar again. So the first thing that I want to show you is something referred to as the evidence-based care sheets. So that's just directly to the right of CINAHL headings uh, in our top banner. The evidence-based care sheets, the EBCS, are summaries on specific key topics which are focused on nursing practice. Each evidence-based care sheet incorporates the latest evidence, statistics, research, and references on a given topic. These guides are amazing. You're gonna find a lot of really detailed information. You'll use the uh, search box here to just uh, browse across them. Go ahead and type in your particular keyword. We'll say that I'm interested in, or I'm in the field of end of life care. So I'll type that into my box. Go ahead and click the browse button. And I can see the first evidence-based care sheet is titled end of life care and decision making. I would check mark that option if I'm interested in seeing it and then I'll select the search button, which is just directly above my results list. Once I've done that, I should see one result featuring the 
EBCS. I can click PDF full text right from here to get to that detailed sheet. So it's going to tell you uh, what we know about end of life care, what we can do, and then it's going to provide extensive references, um, typically to peer reviewed journal articles so that you could continue with your research here. Okay, let's go back to the CINAHL interface here. And again, in our top navigation bar, there's just one other item that I wanted to point out, and, and it's actually listed under the More menu. So if you hover your mouse over More, it's going to um, produce this dropdown, and we're going to check out Quick Lessons now. Quick Lessons, or they're referred to as QLs, are clinically organized nursing inter overviews with information mapped to the nursing workflow. So in regards to whatever topic you type in here, the Quick Lesson is going to provide a description. It's going to provide signs and symptoms, assessment, treatment goals, red flags, and what to tell the patient or the patient's family. You can go ahead and type in your search term just as we did with the evidence-based care sheet. So I saw within the list here that they had something related to altitude sickness. That's something that I recently experienced while hiking in the mountains. So we'll go ahead and check mark the option for altitude sickness. Go ahead and click search just as we did before. Should get one result. That's going to be our quick lesson. And we'll open up this PDF, which again is rife with detailed and valuable information. So with altitude sickness, we're going to know uh, precisely what that is. We're going to have some facts and figures, risk factors, signs and symptoms, an assessment treatment goals, food for thought, red flags, and also what you need to tell the patient or the patient's family. And again, you have that extensive reference list if you do want to refer to some scholarly peer-reviewed research. Any questions on those additional features that I just pointed out with CINAHL? Or really any questions on anything we've covered with CINAHL so far? So I showed you CINAHL headings, same exact thing. It's based off of MESH, which we looked at in Medline. We talked about the evidence-based care sheets, and we just took a look at the quick lessons. So next we're moving on to CINAHL search limits. Alrighty, so with our CINAHL search limits, okay, and I did get a question in chat, and this is an excellent question. So the question was, can we use the quick lesson for research papers? And if so, how do you cite those? So this is a really good question. And to be entirely honest, you probably are going to have to check with your instructor if you may use it. Now, the information within the quick lesson is absolutely authoritative and reliable. However, the quick lesson is what we would refer to as a secondary source. What that means is it took a look at the peer-reviewed literature, which is considered a primary source, and it sort of aggregated all that information into this sheet that makes it really easy for you to digest and understand, okay? So basically, if your instructor is saying to you you can only be using primary peer-reviewed sources, then most likely you would not be able to refer to the quick lesson. But if your instructor is a bit more broad in his or her approach and says that just as long as you're incorporating scholarly resources, then absolutely the quick lesson would satisfy as a scholarly source. In terms of citing it, with really any of our databases now, there is an uh, built-in automatic citation tool. 
with our EBSCOhost databases, so CINAHL is one of our EBSCOhost databases, over on the right-hand side, you'll have the option to cite within the tools menu. Click on that option and it is going to populate an automated citation for that particular resource. But here's the thing I want to mention. This is machine generated, so you always want to double check that for accuracy against the APA Publication Manual 6th edition. So even just looking at that, I'm not certain that that citation is correct. I feel like some information is missing. Uh, so if you do ever want to cite a quick lesson, feel free to reach out to us in the library or the Academic Success Center just to make sure that that citation is 100% accurate. I hope that answers your question. I hope that made sense about using the quick lesson and how ultimately it would be at your instructor's discretion. Uh, but again, it is a scholarly source. Great question. All right. Let's move on to the last section of our outline, which is taking a look at the advanced search features within CINAHL. Just like we did in Medline, if we want to access those advanced search features, we're going to click on that hyperlink, which is directly below the search box. And you're going to see here with CINAHL that we have even more search options than we saw within Medline. So if I scroll down to my search options area, this gets to be very, very lengthy here. I'm just going to highlight a few for the sake of time. The first one that I wanted to point out is evidence-based practice, and this is a similar limiter to what we were seeing within Medline. With evidence-based practice, you can apply this limiter and it's only going to return articles from evidence-based practice journals, articles about evidence-based practice, research articles, which would include systematic reviews, clinical trials, meta-analyses, as well as commentaries on research studies. So again, if you're looking for that high level evidence-based research, you would want to apply that limiter within CINAHL here, and again, that option's available in Medline as well. Another limiter that I wanted to make you aware of is the meta-synthesis limiter. And if you're not familiar with uh, meta-synthesis, I would recommend attending our workshop. We actually have a workshop around systematic reviews and meta-syntheses. Uh, but as the name would imply, a meta-synthesis is typically an article with a qualitative methodology that integrates results from a number of different but interrelated studies. It is considered the upper echelon of the upper echelon of, level, of high level research. So it's taking all of these peer reviewed studies that are related and it is integrating all of the results into one article for you. So if you're looking for something that detailed, you can do so by selecting Metasynthesis. So for an example here, I have selected Metasynthesis, and we'll say that I'm looking for Metasynthesis related to eating disorders. So I would type that into my search box and then go ahead and click search. And please be aware, when you are searching specifically for metasyntheses, you are not going to get a lot of results. So you can see that my result here, I, I only have a single result related to uh, eating disorders. And typically with a metasynthesis, there is going to be an extensive list of references, again, because they have synthesized quite a number of studies for you. I mean, you can see this, this references list just goes on and on for pages and pages and pages, but it is aggregating and integrating all the results from these studies into one conglomerate article for you. Back on our advanced search page, there's just two other options I want to quickly highlight for the sake of time here. 
You will also see an option here within CINAHL to search only pre cinal or to exclude pre cinal So I like to explain what that is because it doesn't really make sense if you're searching CINAHL, what, what does pre cinal mean? So pre cinal is going to include records that actually haven't been 100% indexed yet. What that typically means is you're going to see literature here that is very, very new, and it hasn't been fully incorporated into CINAHL yet. So if you're looking for the most current up-to-date research, it may be beneficial to select searching only pre cinal so these records are in process uh, and they haven't had subject headings applied to them yet. So what that could mean is if you're using the CINAHL headings and you're searching for particular subject terms, it may not include the pre cinal So this could be a separate search that you run outside of the CINAHL headings, outside of using that MeSH thesaurus to see the most recent research that just hasn't been fully indexed yet. And I could show you what that looks like. So we'll select search only pre -cinal. We'll say that I'm looking for anything related to internet addiction. And I can see that my results, my first results are pretty recent here, June and August of this year. It's possible that they just have not, or rather we know they just haven't been fully indexed into CINAHL yet. So these are some results that I may not have encountered if I had only been using the CINAHL headings to search. And the last advanced search option that I wanted to point out for you is the option of selecting only research articles. So when applied, your search is limited to articles that are about a research study or an examination of subject matter that uses investigational or experimental techniques. A research study is going to include data collection, subject selection, methodology, a discussion of the results, and application, if any. I'll show you what that looks like. We'll select research article. I'm looking for anything related to agoraphobia. Go ahead and click my search button. And I know that these results, again, they're research articles, so it's going to include a discussion of um, methodology. So you can see here our methods, our results. It's going to talk about data selection uh, and also a discussion of those results and application. All right, so that is everything that I had for you on today's workshop, which we discussed Medline and CINAHL as well as MeSH in detail. There are additional resources within the workshop outline if you would like to further your knowledge beyond what we covered within the hour. Uh, you are going to receive a follow-up email after this workshop as well. Uh, the email is going to include a link to recording of this workshop. 